So let's get started with it. The Framingham risk estimator is really not a screen. It doesn't measure plaque. It's a guess. And, you know, a lot of folks would not be happy to hear me say it's not a good guess either. But like I said, I am not the only guy saying that. Just go look at the science. It's a predictive equation. It's developed from the Framingham Heart Study, which started back in the 50s. This study's been renewed. It's now gone through five cohorts, I think. If you're not clear on what a cohort is, it's just five generations of folks being studied. It includes medical history, demographics, smoking history, things like that. It also even includes a tissue bank, serum bank, most of all. So with a serum bank, you can go back and say, look, we have questions, for example, about some of the more common ones were what level of cholesterol somebody had when they were 10 years younger. If you can convince the group that your study's worth taking a look at, they will let you go back and take a look at some of that old serum to see what that level was. Back to the score itself, it translates into a 10-year hazard risk ratio. It estimates your risk of having a heart attack or stroke. Now, these risk factors are important. They're not unimportant, but the dependence on a scoring to miss diagnoses, opportunities for treatment, and some issues. Here's an example, Susan. Susan is 62 years old. She was taking 20 milligrams daily of Lipitor. Her doc put her on that simply because her LDL was 105. But once you actually start measuring her plaque, she didn't have any. So she talked about her family history. She talked with a little bit more with her PCP and she talked with me. And after some discussions about her true risk, she just said, you know, I don't think I want to take those right now. Now, again, a lot of docs would say, that's crazy. Anybody would an LDL of 105 should be on a statin. Yes, that's a very common standard that you'll hear. But again, there's new evidence coming out. There was a study recently that showed there's just not significant risk if you have a negative calcium score. So that brings up the point that maybe we should be doing some things like calcium scores, CIMTs, a little bit more measurement of the actual amount of plaque. As we said, Framingham started many generations back. It's a town in the south of Boston. Congress originally commissioned the study for 20 years. At the end of 20 years, the docs, the epidemiologists running it said, you know what, we need to close this out. Congress said, nope, we're not going to do that. And at this point, I think most of us are happy that they didn't. Even though you've got some challenges with Framingham, it has been a massive boon and improvement for us to understand exactly what sort of things cause heart attack risk. Now, for example, dietary issues. You know, all the lifestyle issues that we talk about and the importance, most of that clearly came originally out of Framingham and has continued to be demonstrated elsewhere. So we've talked about places where you may have a problem. So let's just look at the data from one of the studies that these guys from Hopkins and Mayo and Harvard are mentioning when they're talking about actual risk versus true risk. Over on the right hand side, this is a study looking at actual risk versus Framingham estimated risk. And as you can see, these lighter bars were the Framingham estimate. The darker bars were the actual risk that they saw. And yes, the ones where you get this huge difference is women. One study showed that among Japanese American and Hispanic men and Native American women, the Framingham risk factor systematically overestimated the risk. The most recent Framingham calculator often doubles the risk, especially in women. Yes, like I said, you don't have to be scrubbing through academic medical studies. New York Times has already covered this. And so what happens then is a lot of people get put on statins that maybe should not have been put on statins. So one of the questions that comes out of this is what causes the problem? of Framingham. The bottom line is the guidelines go back to 2013 or the data that's used in the guidelines. So the obvious question is, well, obviously we've had some significant improvement in risk. Why don't we use newer data? That 2013 and prior data is the data that's available and it's the most recent data that's available. It takes a long time, to quote my friend James, the sausage to be made to take the studies, get them completed, get them peer reviewed, then get them into something like a Framingham risk calculator. So then the next question is, well, if the 2013 numbers were bad, why don't we go back and use prior numbers? Well, the prior numbers are worse. So there's no suggestion. It would be crazy to throw Framingham out the door. Framingham is a critical tool, but you just need to know what you're dealing with. And usually your doc's not going to know this kind of stuff.
Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just going to have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. You, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. But the current times are tough. Major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership where you get access to our courses, a private webinar each month, and access to our supplement store and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism is doing on a daily basis. And you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.